a dream come true for the special needs community. Coming up, meet the organization behind this new reality. The Whitney Reynolds Show is supported by Children's Learning Place, excellence in early childhood education since 1998, educating Chicago's children for 20 years, and the Auto Barn Mazda of Evanston and Chicago, the Auto Barn Mazda, where driving matters. Special thanks to the Illinois chapter of the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, Dr. Daftari and the team at Arda Modern Dentistry, Kevin Kelly with Jameson Sotheby's International Realty, STI Movers, Mazda, Chicago Andrea Creative, and Cellular Intelligence. a day that some people thought would never come true. We are looking at independent living for people with special needs. You're watching The Whitney Reynolds Show. Welcome to a day in the life of people with special needs. We are at a place that some consider miracle ground for our guests and their families doing what some folks consider impossible, living independently as adults and working through their handicap. Helping kids and their family with special needs live independently, that's the job of our first guest, and she's joined with one of her residents, Doug. Together, they are doing what some consider to be impossible. And welcome to the show, Doug and Abby. It's great to have you on set. Doug? How does it feel to be on TV today? I'm um, good, I guess. So, Abby, you are the director of Keshet, and you have been involved for 28 years here. Today, we're on location at um, the working facility. Gadol. There, Gadol. Yeah. And there is also housing. And what I love about this program is it's kind of a dream come true for parents with kids with special needs. Correct. Tell us about the housing program that Doug lives in. So the house where Doug lives is located in Highland Park, Illinois, and it's a unique living environment because it has about 10 individual apartments with two bedrooms. Mm -hmm. Doug, you're at number four? Yeah. Now, Abby, this is very unique because one of the reasons I want to highlight this is whenever parents have a kid with special needs, one of the first things they might think is how does my kid go about adult life? Well, what's really unique is that Keshet is a family and this gives parents hope. So mm -hmm. while there are individual units, there's also a common area, more like a community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, where people yeah. have meals together if they choose, or they can have a party in their own apartment. So it's the best of both worlds. And it has a, a beautiful kitchen and a sofa downstairs where people can socialize when they want. And Doug's very social. Sometimes it takes encouragement to bring everybody together. And it's a very warm, loving community. So while we respect and we give dignity to those that want to be by themselves and in their own apartment, Right. So we encourage our young adults to come down and be part of the family that we've created. You actually opened up your second housing recently. Yeah. And how do you recruit for people like Doug to come in and live there? Well, I think that Keshet has earned and continues to work toward keeping the quality reputation that we have. It's, it's a constant effort, um, but people know that when they come into our program that they're getting more than just a program. Yeah. And there's that sense for parents that you know that our kids are going to be loved and taken care of and nurtured and, and, and pushed yeah. so that they're not alone in the apartment. Yeah. And when they leave the building that they're clean and presentable and that they're doing the best that they possibly can. Adam has his own apartment. Uh, it's amazing the life Keshet has given him. Parents are desperate 
really desperate for Keshet quality housing. That's why my life was created. It's the answer to a lifetime of worries. It, it is incredible. It has all the hallmarks of a Keshet program. A few weeks ago, Adam slept in his own apartment at my life for the first time. And when we were leaving, I remember thinking, I have been worried about this moment his whole life. But when we left, we left him with Keshet. There's one home, there are so many parents. Every parent should have the comfort of knowing that their child is gonna be taken care of, be safe, and be encouraged. That's what Kesha does. And we just have to find a way to meet the need of the community. Abby joins us now from an operations standpoint of how these dreams are coming true. Abby, welcome back. We just had you and Doug on, and that was a real look at your My Life program. And I just want our viewers to know what a unique situation today is because we're highlighting a dream come true for so many parents. Tell us about your program. Well, one of the pieces that I love about Keshet is that we've grown organically. As our kids have gotten older, we've grown. And so that parents can have a place that they consider to be safe and a part of the community. Yeah, let's go into the logistics of that because okay. that is something that seems really difficult to navigate when you have people with special needs coming to live independently. Correct. How does safety work in a day to make sure that people are going to and from and coming back okay? Well, in the residential world, it's 24-7. Mm -hmm. And so that piece of, of staff and our staffing ratios are higher because to do a program right, you have to really invest in the quality. And to make sure that our kids are safe, getting from home to work to their next part of their scheduled day or a doctor's appointment, we do make sure that we have enough staff coverage and that everyone is able to communicate in one way or the other. When people come into the program, do you help them find jobs? Because that's something that seems very difficult to do. Like, how do you secure a job for them? So, yeah, you know, we don't only look at where you put your head at night. We're looking at the whole person. And where you put your head at night is only, you know, eight to ten hours, right? Mm -hmm. So what are you doing the rest of the day? So, of course, we do work with job sustainability, job discovery. We have a customized employment program where we help people identify jobs that work for them mm -hmm. and match their passion with what they enjoy doing so that, like me, they never feel like they're working. That is awesome. And so we're what, what looks like a in a gym right now. Yes. But this is actually one of your places where the people go during the day. Correct. This is the Gadal program where right. people check in in the morning, you have food here. What does what happens in this location? Well, one of the pieces that makes Keshet unique is that we're community based, and everything that we do is based on the inclusive opportunities that our community provides, that our school provides, that camps provide. So everything from educational, recreational, jobs, it's based in the community. Mm. So at Cadol, giving adults daily opportunities for life, everyone meets here mm -hmm. and then everyone has a job. We have 100% employment. Wow. It's incredible. That really is. And I'm hearing the community part right now. I heard yes. karaoke going on out yes. there. I'm yes. hearing lockers move, people cheering. Is this a normal day? It's a normal day. Wow. So every program for every person is individualized. Some people go in groups of two or three to certain jobs. Some people go on their own to a job and some then some people come back and meet for lunch here, and now it's a Friday afternoon, so we end a little bit earlier on a Friday, and they're doing afternoon karaoke. It's a very happy place. With special needs, there's so many different needs for different people, and also different spectrums when we're talking about autism. How do you make that work in such a diverse community in these different groups? Well, you know, I think we look at people as people and not as their disability. That's good. And so I do, and I say that not, not flippantly, but that's actually our philosophy. We don't really know what the diagnoses are of many of our, our team members or our students that go to our schools. We know in the paperwork 
but they're treated individually and looked at through their eyes of, of able people and what can they do to the best of their ability. Mm -hmm. I like what you just said to the best of their ability. So you're looking at them as individuals right. and then helping place them in the right programs? Correct. So oh. for example, we have one young man who loved cars when he was eight years old. And he was able to get a job at Evanston Subaru. And he was able to carry over his passion for cars into a real life job. So, and some people are people people and they're able to work in bigger communities, and some people are more, more uh, prefer more to work one-to-one. Uh, -one. And so we look for those kinds of jobs. We have one young lady that loves children. She works at a coffee shop in Evanston where there's part of the job is daycare. Moms can sit and have their coffee, and their children can play. That is amazing. And how do you scout those jobs for these people? It's a lot of work, so we have someone specifically hired to scout out the jobs. Mm, how it's a lot of work, that? yes. So talking about the growth of this program, because you've been here 28 years. Yes. So you've seen it almost from day one. How has it grown? Well, we've grown both, um, I would say, I would say deep and wide, there's a song like that. Now but, I'm singing it in my head. Yes. <laughs> but you know, we've now taken in younger children and we're also serving people at the older end. Mm -hmm. And so the kids that we started our organization with that are now in their late 30s that are here, or mid 30s that are here, um, we're still now serving people that are six and seven years old, even three years old in some of our preschool programs. We've gotten calls from parents soon after they have a baby and they know there's an issue with that baby. Mm -hmm. Knowing that Keshet is here and that will be by a family side is reassuring for many families. That is. I was going to say, whenever you have an adult family that has a person in the program, and then maybe another family comes you know, with a child, like you were saying, do you connect them where they can talk to the adult family? We just did that. We had, um, in fact, it was such a touching moment. We have two people. One of the young men is 30, the young man is 30, and there's a, a baby in the community. I think this little girl is one with the same diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And there's a picture of the 30-year-old young man holding the one-year-old baby with the same diagnosis. It's remarkable. So yes, we do make those connections. And just the feeling for parents, because for that baby's family, knowing that life can go on. Yes. What is um, one of the biggest things you can tell parents that are watching today that have a kid with special needs? I think one of the hardest challenges for parents is learning to embrace their child and accept them for who they are. Mm. That's a challenge. It's a challenge for typical parents to love your child unconditionally. Mm -hmm. And for many parents, that, that's... That's hard. We always want more for our children. But like all children and children with special needs, they're all gifts. And we all offer something. And I would just say to embrace your child and nurture and love that child. Because as kids, that's all they really want. That is beautiful. Well, thank you so much for coming on. This program is phenomenal because it is giving so many people and families hope. Well, thank you so much for highlighting this needed, needed exposure. Thank you. This is our daughter, Yakira. Can you say hi? Hi. Hi. Our daughter, Yakira, is four and a half years old. She uh, was diagnosed with uh, Down syndrome uh, when she was born. We found Keshet. Um, you know, we, we were talking about where to send her to preschool, and we sat down with Keshet and talked about options for the future, and Keshet's answer was, why not now? Why for the future? As parents, we always worry, but we know she's in good hands, and when Keshet and Eric Crown said, we can do this, she said she can be part of a school, the same school my other kids go to, and really reach her potential there, and it does take us some ease in our mind to know that, uh, that people who are experts in the field are really uh, helping us and her along in this journey.
It's now time for our viewer's voice, and this week we took it to the people at Cash It. We asked them, how has this program changed your life? Hi, I'm Zita View, and I've been going to Goto for many, many, many years. I work at the Shaka, yeah. You work at a school. What do you do at the school? We help for the kids. You serve food to the kids, right? You serve lunch? Yeah. Uh, music. I like music a lot. What, do you play an instrument or you just like listening to No, music? listen, the rabbi first comes and we sing and we get up and dance, you know, and I make a list for him and we all uh, get up. And what, what else happened recently that was amazing? I got a job at Little Beast Cafe. Get social with us. Make your voice heard. Submit your video on WhitneyReynolds.com. Our next two guests have been impacted by autism and know firsthand how hard it can be to envision day-to-day -day life. Scott and Kenny join us now with more. Welcome to the show, Scott and Kenny. I'm so glad to have you here. Kenny, how are you feeling today? Good. Great. <laughs> I love it. Now, Scott, you're Kenny's dad, and Kenny actually does a lot of communicating through his phone. Yeah, Kenny uses an iPad and an iPhone, and he's got many different word um, <laughs> word programs on the iPhone, so he supplements his actual voice with his iPhone, and it's a great way for him to communicate, tell you what he needs and wants, where he's going, what his schedule is. It's a very effective tool for um, young adults with special needs. Thank you, Kenny, for coming on. As we were getting ready for this segment and we were walking through, he was able to communicate on the phone. And I bet as a parent that you had no idea what today would look like for you oh. and when he was a baby. So, so, what has this been like for you? So first of all, the phone, uh, the iPad opened up his world because he has a lot of subtle gestures and movements, but with the iPad, he's able to communicate exactly what he's thinking, and it lets us really go back and forth with him, and it's a wonderful tool. It's been great. That is amazing, and just to think, and I want to go back to this thought. When you found out that he had autism, and you had no idea what the future would look like, could you envision standing and I don't mean physically here, but today where you are. No, it, first of all, it's a devastating diagnosis for any family that learns that a child has special needs. And then when they're a, a year old, two years old, however, whenever that point takes place, you have to really digest it and then figure out what your plan of attack is. So our plan of attack was moving forward, making Kenny's life the best we could for him, but also getting involved in a great organization like Keshet, where Keshet started him at three years old in their programming, and now at 23, he's still very actively involved in this organization, in the Godol Life Skills Program here. And that's actually where we're standing. And there's a gap sometimes in between, you know, you have the program where people can live independently, but then what happens during the day? That's a big chunk of time. And that's what this program has been able to do. Tell us about what a day looks like here. So the program's amazing because the program has trained a lot of these kids to then go out into the outside world. And they're all very, well-versed in their jobs. So Kenny has a job at the Staybridge Suites Hotel where he does vacuuming and towels, and it's actually a paid job, and they love him there, and he loves being there. And then he comes back here because it's about a one to two hour a day job, and they fill the rest of the day, but they fill the day in meaningful ways. He's not at home watching TV. They take him here, they do social activities. They'll do yoga, they'll do art, they'll learn how to cook in the kitchen, all sorts of programming. And then they leave this facility, which we're physically at now, and do other things. They might go work out, or they might go do Meals and Wheels, and actually do other charitable work as well. But this is the hub. You're standing in the hub of where everything sort of takes place for Keshet and the young adults of Keshet. And what you were saying is they can go out and help other people. And so it's a life-giving thing. They're learning skills that not only help them, but it can also help others. It, it's, a, it's amazing how much our kids give back. We have kids that not only work in the outside world, in restaurants, in hotels, and things like that, but we have kids that work at funeral homes, as social directors. We, um, and when I say kids, I'm talking about young adults from Keshet. We have, we have children that do the Meals and Wheels program, as, as I alluded to. We have children that volunteer at other facilities for aged people. And they are so active and so involved and so immersed in the community, but all of it starts here in the Godol Center, where they get that skills and training. What would you want, because our show, it airs in different places, and there's viewers maybe watching online or you know somewhere way far away from Chicago, but special needs is everywhere, and it doesn't discriminate on families. And where 
what would you want people to know about the diagnosis of a kid having special needs? Well, well it's it, two things. One, never give up. You have to fight through it. You have to be strong as a parent. You have to be an advocate for your parent. But really, it, the Godot program, what it involves is it involves employers. It involves corporations to really take our kids in and understand that they have to give back. We need to get out more in the community and make businesses understand that our kids are valued employees. They actually are able to do things and participate, and actually they add a lot to these communities. So I mentioned that Kenny works at a hotel. Kenny is so embraced by the other employees at that hotel. He's not only embraced by them, but they celebrate birthdays and holidays and all sorts of things, and he's part of their fabric, and I actually think that corporation that employs Kenny is better off for employing Kenny because it brings them together as a community. It makes something special there. So if anyone's watching that has an opportunity to, to employ a, a young adult with disabilities, that's really what Keshet's about. Godol is about giving them the skills and the tools and the functionality to get out in the real world. And these kids are ready to work in the real world just like any other 23-year-old man or woman. But what's also important is for these kids to have a sense of themselves, a sense of responsibility and fulfillment. And the only way you do that is if employers open up their doors and, and give our kids an opportunity to work there. So if you're asking me what I'd like to see come out of Whitney Reynolds, the Whitney Reynolds show today, and the message I'm trying to send out is please open your doors, give our kids a chance to get a job and work and be fruitful and productive in the community. And are you shocked to see where Kenny is at this point in his life? Kenny has um, far surpassed anything my wife and I thought he'd be able to do. He has taken so much pride in, and you're asking me about his schedule. When he goes through his iPad at night and he goes through his scheduling, he goes through it in a manner in which he has so much pride to show us what he's going to be doing at work the next day. And he's actually disappointed. Right now he's only working part-time three days a week because of programming issues with, with, our, with, with some other things. But he's there three days a week. He's actually disappointed not to be there a fourth day. They'd be happy to have him there a fourth day. But he loves his job and it gives him just a purpose to get up in the morning, get dressed, and go to work and do his thing. And the community aspect. You said they learn how to cook in here. They have meals around this table. How important is community for our children with special needs? Our community is so important. And what I've learned as Kenny's gotten older, we've done a much better job as a society educating our typical children and our typical adults about what special needs young adults need and what they require. And actually, you picked up on it wonderfully, Whitney. You saw that Kenny wasn't very verbal with his responses, but you got excited when you saw that he was communicating with his iPad. And I found that remarkable because if people just give it a chance and digest it a minute, they could get what our kids are trying to do. And every all these kids are communicating one way or another. Some differently, some have a voice, some have an iPad, some will write, some will, will draw, but they're always trying to get their thoughts a, a, across no matter what disability they have. Well, thank you so much for coming on today and opening up all of our eyes to what can go on when we choose to make a difference. Today's guests are remarkable. A day in their life has been eye-opening and heartwarming. We wanted to leave you with Jeremy Roenick, a familiar face to hockey, and also someone that's passionate about today's topic. Your sister is paralyzed, is or sister-in-law sister is, yeah. is paralyzed. Right. Is this something that has made you go a little deeper with understanding disabilities? Uh, without question, when you're when you're around a family member who does deal with um, uh, with a handicap, um, it is it, you see the struggles. Uh, you see their their day-to-day. Schedules and what they have to do to survive and what they have to do to live and my my sister-in-law is without a doubt and her husband who is also um, confined to a chair um, Are the strongest most amazing people in the world. They don't ask for anything um, You know we give them as much as we possibly can that they'll take but we see what it How long it takes them to get out of bed in the morning We see how long it takes them to go get coffee to get a paper to make breakfast to do whatever you know that, that people want to do in their daily lives and and these people with these uh, with you know with these um, with these issues I, I hate to say handicap because it's a terrible thing but uh, the physical conditions that uh, unfortunately keep them from having a, a great life like like I have um, you want to do everything you possibly can to make their life easier happier and um, you know yeah, it's it's a it's a great question, and thanks for bringing it up. It does definitely open your eyes to really how hard it is because it's easy not to think about it when you don't see it. 
um, I see it every day and it's uh, and I can't help but and don't want to not remember and we hope today has done that for you too opened your eyes a day in the life is a true testament that dreams can come true for anyone. For more information on today's show, visit WhitneyReynolds.com. Go beyond the interview with Whitney Reynolds in her 52-week guide of inspiration. The book goes deeper with the stories you see on the Whitney Reynolds Show. To order your copy for $12.95 plus shipping and handling, go to WhitneyReynolds.com backslash store and use code PBS.